Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG. RPGs are known for having clunkier gameplay elements on the whole, but mostly because they have to manage and balance 50 different play styles that all have to work perfectly in every situation imaginable. They have to juggle a ton of different crap all at the same time to make sure that your game works, whether you're a pacifist or a psychopathic mass serial killer. All of it has to be balanced and work out regardless of how you approach it. So it's understandable that something like wall running that might be in a Titanfall has to be cut. You know, I wonder if the smell of a particular candle affects the way that you think. So, for instance, if I'm smelling sweet pear lily versus cafe mocha, does that make me talk about things in a different way? Am I more moody? Am I sassier if it's a fruitier aroma? I don't know. I guess we'll experiment with both tonight, see what happens. So I've gotten so many messages on Instagram, Twitter DMs, even emails to my business account, everything, asking me to discuss Cyberpunk 2077. And I'm very thankful for all of those uh, inquiries, but there's a reason I haven't talked about it yet. Since the last time that I talked about it in depth, which was probably late last year after I saw the game behind closed doors at E3, uh, there's been a lot that's been shown off, but I have been very hesitant to discuss it because I want to make sure that I'm not contributing to what I feel could be the Achilles heel of cyberpunk. You see, whenever there's a game that is this hotly anticipated, that is this intensely desired by the community, you have to be very, very careful in managing expectations. It's one thing that we saw with Fallout 4 where people just got their expectations on a whole nother level. The hype train was off to the races, was speeding down the track at 80 miles an hour or whatever a fast train goes, and it derailed and caused a lot of damage and havoc to be wreaked upon the masses. But it all started from fans being excited for something that they were expecting to be amazing. And that's a fair expectation to have, especially when somebody like Todd Howard is just talking a game up and doesn't know when to stop and just straight up lies about a lot of stuff. But with something like Cyberpunk, where they've been very, very careful to manage expectations thus far, it's still pretty difficult, but I think it's more doable. But it requires a lot of participation in the community to help manage our own expectations and not let the hype train get out of hand. For instance, Finley can be super excited for Cyberpunk, but if he's not going to like actually temper his expectations, he's probably not going to actually enjoy it because no matter how great it is, it won't match his expectation that he had in his head, however unrealistic it may be. That had to be the most awkward section of a video I've had in ages. <laughs> you see, it's okay to be excited for a game. In fact, I think it's good. I've argued for being hyped about titles before when people are needlessly pessimistic about everything. There is a balance to be struck here. But with Cyberpunk, we really do have to be careful because Cyberpunk is a game that has literally everything going for it. And when there's a game that has everything going for it, expectations tend to follow in that vein, which is that if everything's going to be great, it's going to be the greatest game that's ever been released. And all of a sudden, when you start watching gameplay footage and you see pop in, you see graphical shortcomings, you see melee combat that looks a little stiff and and kind of crappy you are kind of shocked it hits you in a system shock sort of way where you don't know why this is happening you expected it to be perfect and now you're seeing that it's not perfect why isn't it perfect this is terrible the game must suck they they're the new ubisoft blah de blue de blah blah so today i just wanted to address what we've seen in the last few months as cyberpunk has gotten closer to launch and then suddenly further away from launch and then closer to launch and then further away from launch again after another delay. 
And that has to do with a lot of the gameplay we've seen and some of the features that we found out have been cut. One of those features, and probably the one that received the most crap when they announced that it was cut, would have to be the wall running. This was gonna be something that people were going to use to have very agile builds, builds of characters that are built around rushing enemies, getting up close and personal, really my play style. So I was very excited about wall running and I was very pumped to see how it would actually work in an open world RPG, but apparently they just couldn't get it working in a consistent enough way where it felt as though it was fair, where they felt as though the level design could hold up. It just wasn't working in the way that they had hoped it would. So it was cut. And this is one thing I think a lot of people forget about game development, and that's that a lot of features are cut all the time. You just never find out about them, so it doesn't seem as though it ever happens. But in reality, in a game like The Last of Us Part Two, Neil Druckmann talked about a sequence that's currently in the game during a flashback sequence when Ellie is doing something with Tommy. Originally, that sequence bled into Joel going to visit his girlfriend at the time, and you would go find out that the girlfriend had been bitten, and then Ellie went out to the river to fetch water to try and help. And as she stepped out the building, they hear a single gunshot. Ellie sees Joel walk back out of the building and is kind of, understandably, upset after something went down inside the building and the two share this moment where Ellie knows that Joel either killed her to spare her from the virus or that she killed herself to spare Joel the trouble of killing her to spare her from the virus. Either way, something terrible just went down inside that building, but Ellie doesn't push, doesn't prod, just sits there and talks to him and listens to him. And it's a really sweet moment. But that moment was something that they felt wasn't fitting in the story. It just made the game feel like it was more about Joel than it was about Ellie. It didn't follow the same tone, the same uh, plot line that they wanted to follow, so they cut it. Even though it would have been a very touching sequence, a sequence that I think would have been very interesting to see, it just wasn't working for what The Last of Us Part Two was hoping to do what they were trying to tell by way of the story so they cut it in something like cyberpunk there's been a ton of features that have been played with and experimented with that have been cut over the course of development as is the case with every other game and this is where cd project red's pro consumer approach kind of comes back to bite them in the ass and that's that they share everything with us the consumers which is great because we get to find out so much about the game well in advance we get to see how it's being made we, we really get to see how the sausage is being made something normally we don't get to see and a lot of people aren't particularly interested in seeing we get to see all of that and uh, in all of its nitty gritty detail see what i did there but it becomes a problem when they have to manage their own expectations, when they have to make adjustments or cuts, they have to change the graphical fidelity to get the game more stable because perhaps they decided they wanted to add more screen space reflections and that made it so they had to cut down on all of the volumetric lighting and God rays. So in a couple shots that people look for, they see that the game looks worse, everybody freaks out. They might have a very good reason as to why they made a cut or a change or an adjustment, or even sometimes there was no adjustment at all. But because people get hyped up about something, they freak out. This was famously an example back when Spider-Man for PS4 launched, where there was the whole puddle controversy where everybody was freaking out, accusing Insomniac and Sony of a graphical downgrade compared to what they had shown in previous gameplay demos of an opening sequence in the game. Of course, later it was proven that there wasn't any sort of downgrade. In fact, there were several upgrades to that particular sequence. The main difference was that they were filming the comparative gameplay at a different in-game time of day, which made the reflection look different than it actually was in the original gameplay that was captured. Something as stupid as that caused internet fervor everywhere and yes it was partially due to a lot of irresponsible youtubers pushing for easy clicks where they could argue that insomniac was falling prey to the same crap that all these other terrible greedy huge disappointment companies were doing i could rant about that for hours and hours and i'm sure you would 
click away immediately because it's not particularly interesting. Point being, I think if you have an audience, such as I have with all of you wonderful people and many other YouTubers have that are far larger than I am in terms of their channel size, I think we have a responsibility and a duty to be better than all of the troglodytes that might be pushing random crap on Twitter or on Reddit or 4chan. Like There are great people who are on those sites that share some incredible work with the world and the community. There's also a lot of people that are just trying to fan the flames of outrage and in some cases bigotry and pessimism. It's just, it's all garbage. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to call it like I see it. If something's terrible, I'm going to let you know it's terrible. If there's a downgrade, I'm going to let you know there's a downgrade and I'm going to express my frustration. But if something is totally justifiable and understandable, I'll also let you know. In this case, I think Cyberpunk 2077 getting rid of a few features such as wall running is perfectly justifiable, especially when you consider what this game actually is. And this is probably the most important point of this whole video, and that is that Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG. It's not a first person shooter. It's not an open world looter shooter. It's not even necessarily an open world sandbox in the same way that a lot of Ubisoft titles are. It's different. It's an RPG. RPGs are known for having clunkier gameplay elements on the whole, but mostly because they have to manage and balance 50 different play styles that all have to work perfectly in every situation imaginable. They have to juggle a ton of different crap all at the same time to make sure that your game works, whether you're a pacifist or a psychopathic mass serial killer. All of it has to be balanced and work out regardless of how you approach it. So it's understandable that something like wall running that might be in a Titanfall has to be cut. Now, of course, if it comes out tomorrow that there aren't drivable cars in the game or something like that, a major cut that was one of the selling points of the game initially, I'll bring that up and I will call it out and I think it's garbage and I think they should be ashamed of that cut. And it could affect many people's buying and purchasing decision. But is this on the level of that? No. I wish wall running could have gotten working because I think that could have been really cool. But I understand how having wall running in a city that is incredibly vertical could lend itself to some complicated level design where you have to make sure people aren't able to jump over certain areas or get too high in buildings that aren't fully meshed out inside. Like I, I get it. I understand it. It's just a bit of a bummer. But you know what, that's where I think it should stay because I'm not a 12 year old psychopath who's gonna send death threats to game developers because I'm slightly upset or uncomfortable or even disappointed in the game that they provided me after years and years of their hard work. So all told, I'm very excited to see what Cyberpunk 2077 has to offer, even if certain features are getting cut because the game is a lot larger than just one or two comparatively small features that they ended up cutting just to make sure that the game was balanced and polished and worked evenly. I'm not going to be making seven videos a week on this talking about the next huge big disappointment of Cyberpunk or the huge massive update that's coming that's going to blow everyone's minds because I want to make sure that I'm not getting overhyped about the game and I can enjoy it when it launches. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with The Last of Us Part 2. You just kind of wait and haughty anticipation and then when the game launches you play it make up your own opinion judge it for yourself and move on from there but before we go i want to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video without whom it would not be made and that is nordvpn nordvpn is the groundbreaking virtual private network service with over 4900 servers worldwide and groundbreaking nordlinks protocols that all allow you to browse the internet regardless of where you are safely securely with state-of-the-art encryption and without any sort of noticeable speed difference and it is literally so fast that i don't realize i'm connected to a vpn service unless i actively go and check to see if i'm connected it's that fast that it auto connects protects all of my data everything that i'm doing safe and securely and without any sort of impact on my productivity or workflow. It is literally the dream 
when it comes to VPNs. So whether you're a business person with very sensitive information you wanna make sure is encrypted, whether you travel a lot and you wanna make sure that all of your financial information is safe, or if you are simply at home and you wanna make sure that you're able to watch, say, Netflix from any country in the world, you can do all of it with NordVPN. If you go to nordvpn.com forward slash Luke Stevens and use coupon code Luke Stevens at checkout. They're using a ridiculous promotion right now to get you guys signed up. They're offering you 70% off of a three-year plan that brings in the monthly total after they throw another free month at you to $3.49 a month. That is ridiculous. So again, to check them out, it's nordvpn.com forward slash Luke Stevens, promo code Luke Stevens at checkout. If you like this video, make sure that you like and subscribe. Follow me on all of my social media down below. I also, by the time you're seeing this, will have played Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Watch Dogs Legion. So also make sure that you subscribe so you get notified of when the video breaking down everything that I've learned about the games goes live. But with all of that said, that's all from me, Finley, and Villain Trenton Mirth behind me. We love you very much, and we'll see you in the next video.